All right. Uh, thanks again, Granola, for having me. So I'm Jan, and I'm a software designer, um, member of the design team at Linear, working mainly on the desktop app. And you probably use it, like, I hope, like every day. Uh, so it took me a while to like figure out how to approach this talk, because to me, like, design engineering is like, like new, but also timeless in a way. I've been working on UI systems and developer tools like for a while now. And to me, it always comes to like one thing, which is language, both like how we communicate and also what are exactly these artifacts of communication. And like to go further into the details, like in English, we use words. In software, we also use words, but more like keywords and they help translate code into something that machines can understand. But like, you know, before even writing code, like we exchange mockups, images, videos, Figma prototypes, origami prototypes, specs, tweaks, props, like a lot of things. And that's usually where lots of translation is happening there. Um, and I like to think of design and engineering as kind of two rails on the same track, both run in parallel most of the time, um, both are essential, and both are heading towards the same destination, a great product, a great feature, a great release. But uh, on each rail, you have like obstacles, and you can call it like design depth, tech depth, performance issues, shifting priorities, like the usual mess. And actually you can explain like a lot of collaboration problems and as a result, bad products, bad features, unhappy customers uh, through this metaphor. And of kind of the first one is like the good old like um, design is doing like a lot of focus or a lot of exploration and just running to the finish line without even acknowledging the engineering presence. And then they just like casually like hand waving at their engineering buddy and like they just expect to go all the, all the way above and like kind of meet them. Usually you end up with two different products even if like most of the time you don't even happen to have anything at the end. Another example of this thing is like you might think there is some progress between these two tracks between like the design and the engineer Actually, like they do not collaborate at all. They do not speak. They, they do not speak the same language. I will spare you like the scenario three to infinity, where basically like you have shifting priorities, no shared understanding, maybe not even not even like design involved at the beginning, at the end. Same thing for engineering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sure we all have seen it, and we don't want it to to be reproduced. And usually, this is kind of what you want. You want like a seamless collaboration between the two and you want basically like a high shipping velocity. And sometimes like it's one person as a designer, one person as an engineer, sometimes couple on both fronts. Sometimes it's also like just one person. The reason is it's not really about like roles, like I'm a, I'm a designer, I'm an engineer. It's about like the function, the function of design and the function of engineering. And to be honest, like the track doesn't really care like which side you're on, just care that the train keeps moving, the boat keeps floating, whatever metaphor you want to use, uh, at long, as long as progress is made. And they're like, why don't we see more of this like collaboration, seamless collaboration thing? Well, that's because like you have a wall between like these two kind of trails. And remember the language parts, to me, like this represents like the constant act of translation. And I like to think that this wall is made of, out of Rosetta Stone. For those who like, like history and remember it correctly, and the others, uh, like it used to be something that has, that has been discovered that completely like revolution, uh, revolutionized the translation between hieroglyphs, demotic, and Greek. And it was the same text card three times and one for each language. 
In design engineering, we actually do the same thing. We express intent with like videos, Figma prototypes, et cetera, et cetera, code. And sometimes we lose meaning. And the goal is to not lose meaning, not having this translation gap. And to be like super visual, <laughs> the more our language like kind of overlap, the clearer the world becomes and the more this tone becomes almost translucent, almost like glass. And it can also go all the way to the uh, default state, like super opaque, and you actually have no idea what design is thinking and what engineering is thinking. So the goal is to make like super fast because you also know like what the other side of the track is doing and how you can collaborate with them. And to me, this is really like the real power of a design engineer or a design engineering function. It's live translation. When you're designing, you're already thinking about like implementation details. And when you're coding, you're already thinking about design implication. Of course, designing is not just throwing mockups in Slack channel. Uh, engineering is not about like writing lines of code, but you get the idea. So really, it's not about like switching sides. It's more like translating both ways while staying on the track at the same time. And you can almost see it as like being fluent in a language. And it's like foresight, like seeing translation errors even before they happen for the best of them. And to me, that's really the difference between like shipping that something that might feel right and something that really feels like magic almost. So actually, Alinea, we spend a lot of time polishing that Rosetta Stone. We try to make a point on sharing the same aesthetics, sometimes building like internal tools. Um, designers interact with the code base, visual and UX changes are brought by engineers, and it goes back and forth. So an example I like actually love and find like particularly effective in the usage of Twix to refine a prototype and try to make it actually great. For example, actually something that didn't ship yet is the Pulse sidebar player. For those who don't know, Pulse is a way to get summarized updates from Linear. So but, um, by the end of the day, you get this Pulse notification or by the end of the week. So you are always up to date of what actually shipped in your organization and what will be shipped. And you see this different subtle interaction where it's all started like as a V0 prototype. Um, I had this concept of like a dynamic artwork and it was based on the number of projects in your Pulse notification, uh, the number of reaction like emojis based on this update, and just the number, of the, uh, the number of people in the team. So you got this dynamic artwork thing. And then like I could just like bring it into production and use this internal trick system that we have to like make it a, even more dynamic, try it with dumb data, not anymore with dumb data, but with actual data from notification. Another example like of Twix is what Gavin is doing like on a weekly basis probably uh, for our mobile app is all of these different item animation for the navigation, tweaking the bounciness, this tiger effect, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. And probably my favorite one that we shipped maybe a year ago, I think, is, was made by Daniel, Julius, and Jacob, is for project dependencies. So when you are project blocking another and in reverse. And we have this fairy lines concept to show the dependency. But like, how do you actually represent them? Like, what is the radius? How do you like trick the thing so it doesn't collide with another? And so we had like a bunch of parameters that you can trick and make sure it's looking good in like as much scenarios as possible, let's say. Um, about like the shared language aspects, uh, this is a recent addition that we brought to, tri to triage intelligence. You select a bunch of issues and then you can just like find suggestions for related issues, who might be the best person to work on it, what is the corresponding label and team. And so you have this little thingy like working in the background. And yeah, that was actually what the video I made uh, to sell this concept to the team and invest a bit more time on it until it feels right and like the animation the using is right. And like it, you, it felt right because we already had this kind of language of having this shimmer animation, the monospace um, kind of styling. Um, and yeah, 
Sometimes design engineering is also about training dumb ideas, like a spinning icon for uh, this uh, loader state. Sometimes it's like recording maybe two or three times the same UI element, so you can see like when the two blocks are overlapping, and like you, you can see like the different blur text going on the other divider. That sucks, and we need to fix it. Um, yeah, another example of our like AI magic styling in place, uh, also recently shipped, is when you are on an issue activity summary, so you get like maybe like 15 comments when you're back from holidays. So you actually know like what you need to ship. And yeah, sometimes like fixing your stuff because it's part of the game and for this mini, mini map on the document, for example, where you see a small indentation between items and it represents the H1, H2, H3 hierarchy where it was like uh, misplaced from two pixels, I think. Um, yeah. A bit more personal project, um, like my uh, website. So like the goal for me is to turn anything that makes sense to me to be dynamic into like configurable tweak, so I can use it later, same as linear. And also testing stupid ideas and have fun. Like for example, I'm, you will see that I'm really into like the electricity theme. And so I had this electricity um, kind of animation and puzzle that you can find on my website, like uh, on the hero. And so if you resolve it, like you can see that the notice board is like coming alive and you turn, you turn it out basically. So it was like a SVG animation. Then done with, I redo it, I read it with Rive and then just hook it up with uh, the notice board. So the whole thing comes alive. Then like, I love mood boards. So I don't know about you, but I like to have the same like kind of Fig jam experience, so you can move them, rotate them, scale them, and why not like open the details so you can actually see what I think about um, this video, this piece of UI, uh, whatever. And then you have like a keyboard navigation. Um, why not electrocute lock your cursor if they <laughs> if they are bringing you a bit too close to this symbol? That was actually made like just with a bunch of. Uh, SVG path I drew inside Figma, uh, inside Figma, sorry, and then just use SVG filters to like animate them, make them like. It's kind of tricky because you don't really know if it's working or if it's just a bug, which is fine uh, for this effect. Um, yeah, I'm sure you all have seen like mini players before, but what about like an actual mini player that you can move on the different tracks, and you can like change. Um, like this, like the speed of it, like 233 to 45, back to off, extra, extra. And yeah, happy accidents, as I'm sure you are aware of it. This actually was because of the auto completion. Instead of on resize, I use on reload. Uh, instead of on reload, I use on resize, which is what causes this. Like every time you move to a pixel, it's real, it's real computing. Uh, yeah, final example is more like a, like a sneak peek of what I'm currently building. It's like this tile system to change from a page to another on a website. I'm sure you've already seen it in a bunch of places. And it started as something like this. Then like a more complex form, adding some easings, adding a touch of blur animation. Then bringing like a 3GS object into it, because why not? And make it turn and growing the complexity a bit more again and again and again until you end up with like this system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of, yeah, each page corresponds to a face, to a face of this decagon and it's a tunnel and then each building of the city is coming closer to you because you turn the city on. That's the goal actually. Uh, so I'm still at this uh, step, but hopefully in a few months, maybe it will ship. Um, anyway, like all of these are just shared artifacts, actually, of a bilingual dictionary between design and code. I shared with you like videos, code, design, recording prototype of Figma that just not really like convenience, but translation into action. And to me, it's not really about erasing the gap between like what is design, what is engineering. It's mostly like just maintaining a shared language of making. And the goal is to make the Rosetta Stone 
as clear as possible, make it like super translucent. And yeah, um, uh, like the less we see the world, the more we see like a shared language of making. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.